After clicking the link provided to you by the Foundation, you'll land on the Logon page. If you've already created an account, you can enter your email address and password and log on. Click Forgot Your Password to reset your password if needed. If you don't have an account, click Create New Account. You'll then be asked to fill out some registration information. Anything with an asterisk is required. You may see the option to connect your ScholarSnap profile. If you have a ScholarSnap profile and want to do so, you can connect it to help fill out the registration page and possibly some questions on the application as well. The last step is to set your password. On the next page, confirm that you received the confirmation email. It's important to follow the instructions on this page to ensure that you can receive other emails about your application and possible awards. After registration, you'll land on the Apply page. Any available opportunities for funding are listed here. If you are provided with an access code, you can enter it in the box at the top of the page. Click Apply if you'd like to start a request for funding. You'll be brought to the first form you need to complete, which will likely be an application. All required questions, marked with an asterisk, need to be completed before you can submit the form. You might also see some questions with the ScholarSnap icon. This means that you can pull in answers from your ScholarSnap profile if you have one. You can also fill out these questions manually. The system will tell you if you're over the character limit on a text question so you can adjust your response. For a file upload question, you can only upload one file and there may be restrictions on the file type as well. You might also see a section on the form instructing you to request a third-party response. For example, someone who will write you a letter of recommendation or upload a transcript. You'll need to enter their email address, click Compose Email, and write a message explaining what you need. The system will then email them a link to complete their section of the form. That section won't be visible to you, but the system will tell you whether or not they've completed it. Unless the Foundation instructs you otherwise, you can submit the form even if the third party hasn't completed their section yet. Be sure to note if there's a deadline listed on the form. Depending on how the Foundation has set it up, you may or may not be able to submit after the deadline. If you'd like to finish working on the form later, you can click Save. When you go back to your dashboard, which is where you'll land when you log on again, click Edit next to your request to go back to the form. If you decide you no longer plan to submit this form, you can click Abandon. When you're done working on the form, click Submit. The confirmation page lets you know it was submitted successfully. Once you submit your form, you can no longer make edits. At any point, you can click the Home icon to get back to your dashboard. In the Active tab, you'll see requests you're working on and those that may still require action from either you or the Foundation. In the Historical tab, you'll see requests that are no longer open and active. The Foundation may or may not show the status of approved or denied on your dashboard. If your request is approved, you may be able to click in to see details on the award amount from your dashboard. If you've been assigned any follow-up forms to complete for an approved request, you can access those here. Follow-ups can be saved and submitted just as you did with the application. By clicking your name in the upper right corner, you can edit your profile or change your password. When you're done working in the site, click your name and select Sign Out. 